نستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساءة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فلا يضر إلا نفسه أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال عز وجل اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفكه قولي I'm going to start off today's discussion by talking about some aspects of Surah Al-Anbiya and Surah Al-Hajj. These two surahs, Surah Al-Anbiya and Surah Al-Hajj, they are a pair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts Surah Al-Anbiya by using the word, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word, Ya ayyuhal nas, also in Surah Al-Hajj. So they start both the same way. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on in a further discussion, but the topic of the first ayah is also similar, but not exactly the same. In the Anbiya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Iqtaraba lil nas hisabahum. Come, has come close for the people, their accounting. They have to give an account of what they've done. Wa hum fi ghaflah. But the reality is they they don't even know that it's going to happen. They're heedless. They don't even know that it's going to happen. وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةِ مُعْرِضُونَ And in their ghafla they have turned away. So this is the first ayah of Surah Al-Hajj. So it's Surah Al-Anbiya. The first ayah of Surah Al-Hajj is يَا يُهَا النَّاسِ اِتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ O mankind, have taqwa of Allah. إِنَّ زَنْزَلَةُ السَّاعَةُ شَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ the zanzala, the moving of the earth, of, at the time of sa'a. Sa'a is, sa is different from yawm al-qiyamah. When the earth starts to have its, you can say, death pains. When the earth starts to shake. This is sa'a. The moment where the earth is beginning to come to its end and it starts to shake and convulse. This is sa'a. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ اِتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّ زَلْزَلَةُ السَّاعَةَ شَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ That moment where the earth will be shaking and you'll be looking at شَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ It's something of enormous magnificence. يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا And then it continues. I will go into this ayah inshallah after I continue with the Anbiya. So they both start the same way and they both have similar topics throughout. I'm going to choose some aspects of both of these surahs. So Allah says, اِقْتَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابَهُمْ Has come close to them their accounting. وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةِ مُعْرِضُونَ And in their heedlessness they turn away. مَا يَأْتِيهِمْ مِنْ ذِكْرٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ مُحْدَثٍ No dhikr, no time does dhikr come to them, reminder come to them. إِلَّا إِسْتَمِعُوهُ they listen to it, but in jest, just playing around. It's not serious. Don't take it seriously. Muhammad is reciting these, okay. And then what happens is, you know, imagine Prophet Muhammad is doing da'wah. And this is actually the background setting of these verses. He's doing da'wah, and maybe somebody hurts and he's, somebody's getting a little bit serious. But other people feel, oh, he's getting serious. They're going to now go to him as a sincere advisor. You know that men, Muhammad, X, Y, Z, they're going to say different things. Be careful, you know, just be careful. So this hurt the Prophet. You know, he's trying to bring them and he, people become inclined and all of a sudden they're not inclined. So this is the background in which the, these ayat are being revealed and being discussed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, these are not serious people, the people that are in the background pulling people away. 
they're always into jest and joking. They always want entertainment. They don't realize this world is a very serious place, which is an ayah in this surah that's going to be, I'm going to discuss. It's very, very interesting, very powerful ayah about this point. And in secretly, they do najwa, meaning go and then talk to him and convince him, don't listen to him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has combined all of the different statements, not all, but many of the different statements that they used to say behind Prophet Muhammad's back to the people that were beginning to get a little bit serious, beginning to, you know, listen, maybe, you know, he's on to something, but then they would find a way to get to that person's ear and they would say different things. Now this is being mentioned. So the wrongdoers, what would they say? This man, Muhammad, he's a man like you. Like, why are you going to just run after him and make him your leader and just listen to everything he says? There's no need to do that. You know, we're your sincere advisors. Don't do that. This is the first one. Or they would say, he's come with magic. This is magic. People listen to his Quran. You know this, the many, many stories where they used to stop people from listening to Quran. And one man, he came to the city of Mecca and he was told, there's this man here. You better not listen to him. So he put cotton in his ears, right? And then he started thinking, wait, I'm intelligent, I'm intelligent enough to make my own decision. And he took his cottons out and started listening to the Prophet Anyway, the story continues. Don't you see? This is plain magic what he's doing. He reads this Quran and people fall into his spell. Then Allah, in, Allah interjects here to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi I know this is happening behind your back. And I know everything that's hidden. Okay, so to give the Prophet some, some solace in his heart that, you know, he tries so hard, people start to listen, and then there are always people trying to counter his, his good deeds, his good works, his efforts, his fruits, or they're trying to take it away from him. So Muhammad is told, and he says, Allah knows every statement that's in the sky and on the earth. And he hears and he is all over. <coughs> then they say also what else? Now the topic goes back to what the discussion was. But you know what else they say? Oh, these are just, you know, just dream type, dreamy type words he's put together. He's just, you know, put a bunch of things together. They don't really have any meaning. We're also, they're sin they come sincerely to them and pretend like, oh, we've been listening to him for 10 years. We've been listening for five years. It doesn't make sense to us. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, but if the No, no, no. He's just made this up. It's not from God. But who is Or they'll say, oh, he's just a poet. He's just doing poetry. Or they'll say, Or tell him, come on, bring some ayah, some 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 miracle that we will see. Like the prophets of the old used to bring, you should bring some miracle for everyone to see. Other than this Quran, not this Quran. Right? This Quran, they'll say, this is magic. So bring something else. So this was, you can say, the introduction to Ibrahim. This also gives you a type of introduction to Surah Hajj because of them being a twin surah, having a relationship like that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in response to some of the things that were being said, a very powerful statement, I believe. At least philosophically, it's very powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Look, whatever we created in the heavens and the earth and between them, You've not created it as jest, meaning what? When you combine this with some of the other ayahs that are around. That if Allah is playing, then He was only going to play with Islam, only play with His body. Why He's not playing with nature? Sometimes gravity is less, then gravity is more. 
and then gravity goes away one day, and then gravity increases one day. Why isn't he, if he's just going to play, why is he not playing with, uh, with all the خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقِّ He created heavens and earth in justice. I mean, this is serious. بِالْحَقِّ This is reality. And if he was playing, he would. why would he not play with the other aspects? He's going to play with his, his, the idea of, of hadaya. He's going to play with that, that thing that should be guidance to people. He's going to play with that. And he's, and he's not playing. So Allah subhanahu wa says, مَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمْ لِلَّاعِبِينَ وَلَوْ أَرَدْنَا And if we were, if we had decided, we were going to play. If we had decided, we were going to play. That this is all just a big joke that I'm doing. If Allah said, if I was to even do that, وَلَوْ أَرَدْنَا أَنْ نَتَّخِذُ لَهْوَ And if I was to take all this as jest, as just a playtime, لَوْ أَرَدْنَا أَنْ نَتَّخِذُ لَهْوَ لَنَتَّخِذُهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا We would have done it, or we would have done it from ourselves if we wanted to do that. But you look at the world around you. It's a very serious world. When you pick up a book and it falls to the ground, Allah is telling you, I'm serious about my laws. Just as I'm serious about my laws of my nature. You pick up a book and it falls to the ground. That is my nature. I am serious. I don't change my laws. I'm serious about what I do. And I'm serious about my laws that I've given to you in the same way. Because if Allah was playing, gravity would be more one day. Gravity would be less one day. And everything would be just in disarray, like a play, like a play place. But every time nature, every time cause and effect works, is, is Allah saying evidence that I'm serious about what I'm doing. And I'm serious about what I've created. And I'm serious about the guidance I've given you. This is not play time for me. I'm not playing around. You know, we even have saying this thing, the Shaheen playing, right? I'm not playing. I mean, I'm serious. This is what Allah is saying. I'm not playing. This is serious. And now if you take this back to the first ayah of Surah Al-Anbiya and then Surah Al-Hajj, Surah Al-Hajj is even more powerful in, in my feelings, you know. اِقْتَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابَهُمْ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَ The hisab of Allah is coming near, but people are heedless. Allah is saying, look, it's all serious. Don't you see? Right? And you have all these excuses like we discussed that they had with the Prophet ﷺ. They were giving out all these excuses. So Allah says, no, we're not playing. This is not play time for me. I'm not playing around. Then another interesting ayah in this surah, Surah Al-Anbiya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <coughs> I don't know if I'll have time to do something I want to do, but Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Did those who deny the truth not see? Did they not see? أَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَ The heavens and the earth were one entity. They were one entity. And then what did we do? كَانَتَ رَتْقًا فَتَقْنَاهُمَا we caused it to explode. We caused it to explode. You know what that's called in science? It's called the Big Bang. Allah said, I caused this whole, you know, it was all one, and I caused it to explode. In another ayah, we haven't read that ayah yet. We created the heavens with our hands. And we're causing this universe to even expand more. That's what's happening. The universe is expanding faster and faster every day. The universe is expanding. Anyway, so Allah subhanahu wa says, Alam yara kafaru. I mean, this ayah is so powerful. I mean, how can Muhammad have known the beginning of organic and inorganic matter? Alam yara kafaru anna samawati wal ardi kanata ratqan fataknahuma wa ja'alna min al ma and we created from water every living thing. We created from water every living thing, Allah says. We know this is where life started, from water. Will you not believe? Will you not believe? I'm giving you the, the from the man Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi al-Ummi. He doesn't know even what is alif and lam and mean. He doesn't even know these letters. He only, it's like saying you can't be literate and say K-O-O-K. You can't do that. Right? It's, if you know the letters and you're not, then you are literate. So in that sense, the Prophet was literate. But anyway, this man is saying this. 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَا الْأَرْضَ رَوَاسِيَ And then I'm going to actually uh, skip one ayah. So Allah is talking about nature and we put the mountains. Why did we put the mountains? So the earth doesn't shake. I can go into this. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the mountain, how do, how, how do earthquakes happen? When the, earth, when the mountains cause, the, the, the crust crushes into each other and stops earthquakes from happening. And uh, the, the, the mountains are much deeper underground than they are upward. They're like pegs. They're nailed to the ground, deep in the ground, so that the crust won't move. The plate tectonics, they're known as, so that they won't move. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the ozone there. وَجَعَلْنَا السَّمَاءِ السَّقَفَ مَحْفُوزًا And we made the roof of the earth something that's a protecting protection for you. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and then Allah continues, the point is Allah is giving many of His signs in this surah. And then, now let's come to, another interesting point that Allah mentions in Surah Anbiya. This is very, very interesting and a very, very important point. I'm running out of time for the, all everything I want to say, but I'm going to say this quickly. And then. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his sunnah. He has a rule. And the rule is, haramun ala al-qariyatin. It's haram for a qariya, a nation, a, a city, okay, a village, a city. Haramun ala qariyatin ahlaknahum. That when we destroy them, when we destroy a city, أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ They don't return. This is when Allah brings destruction to a city. Historically, there's only been one city in the history that has been revived again, back to its original state, and that was Jerusalem, which has to do with the Ajuj and Ma'juj, which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that حَتَّى إِذَا فُتِحَتْ يَعْجُوجُ وَمَعْجُوج وَهُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ حَدَبٍ يَنْسِلُونَ وَهُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ حَدَبٍ يَنْسِلُونَ I'm not going to talk about Ya'juj and Ma'juj today and how, how this refers to the end of times. But it is the Sunni. In New Orleans, once it's destroyed, it's destroyed. You can only make something different. You can't bring it back. And we know, I hope, I think a lot of you know what used to happen in New Orleans, what it was famous for. And Allah destroyed it. It's, it's like it's just a different place now. So this is the Sunnah of Allah. When a city is destroyed, it's destroyed. It doesn't come back. And this is the Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can look at the books and pages of history and try to find a city that was destroyed and then Allah brought it back. Except for one city. It never happened. So I thought that would be interesting to share with you also. Let's go on to... Hajj. So the Hajj is very interesting. I'm only going to go over some parts, and then after that we're going to continue with the next part that I want to go over. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَعْلَىٰ عَوْذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ And if you hear this in good talawa, if you, a good reciter recites this ayah, and if you understand what's being said, it can shake, it shakes you. Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ اِتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ Fear Allah. اتقوا ربكم إن زنزلة الساعة شيء عظيم. The zanz the 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 earthquake at that time at the end of the earth's time is something something of great magnitude. How great of a magnitude that Allah describes. يوم ترونها and that day you will see كل ذات حمل every woman who is pregnant she will drop her child. And you will see people, they look drunk. But they're not drunk. But the truth is, the punishment of Allah is very, very severe. This is what it will do. So again, what is the common point between Sutul Anbiya and Sutul Hajj? It, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. Allah is saying, I'm not playing. This is serious. And then at the end of Surah Al-Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about what He expects the Muslims to do. The 
the obligations he puts on us as a community. Because prophets were coming, now no longer there's going to be prophets. The Ummah is now responsible for conveying the message of Islam to the others. Inshallah, I will end here for this. Inshallah, in the next book, I will continue.